Uh, what we're going to do now is just a very quick uh, demo just to look at what Firefly does, what some of these pieces look like in action. Uh, and you talked a lot about how the sort of typical uh, organization flow is to have a lot of disparate pieces, maybe a blockchain, maybe some off-chain things that all need to be tied together. And uh, a lot of the work in the enterprise ends up being not actually working on the blockchain, but in tying all these things together. So what Firefly does is provide a very robust framework for gluing all these things together and for allowing you to plug in uh, whatever pieces you may need. Uh, the general operations that come into Firefly are called messages, and each message, each message may have uh, a number of bits of data attached to it. Firefly is then going to take those messages, batch them together, uh, and the batch may contain one or more messages and data, and then uh, it'll pin them with a blockchain transaction. Uh, so that you know exactly when the event happened, it'll hash the data and the uh, hash of this batch is stored on the blockchain, which in this case I've shown as Ethereum, but as we were just discussing, uh, could be Corda, could be Fabric, could be anything else that you plug in. <coughs> then the actual data may be stored locally in the database, it may be stored in a private uh, S3 cloud, it may be stored in the distributed file system IPFS, and basically each of these items ties back uh, to this batch in Firefly. So I'm going to step through all the different components uh, and, and show you kind of what messages look like, what data looks like, what transactions look like uh, to give you a feel for how this would actually apply to an enterprise data flow. The first piece that anyone would encounter when working with Firefly is the Firefly CLI. This is going to be the easiest way for a, a developer to get set up building an enterprise application on Firefly. Uh, and we'll go through a lot of this in the later panels through the technical overview and the workshop later this morning. Uh, but just wanted to give a quick look at what the console looks like. Uh, you have a lot of commands that will be familiar to anyone who's used Docker or a similar command line tool uh, for creating Firefly stacks that you know encompass all these pieces, uh, starting them, removing them, all of that. Uh, and then I have a stack running here that's actually just a uh, set of Dockers that represents a three-party system. Uh, and I will show you first the uh, Firefly UI. So the uh, different components I was talking about, uh, messages, data, transactions, I've run a few items through it here, and I'm going to run a few more to show you how it changes. But it comes out of the box with a full console uh, for exploring all these things and seeing uh, what each member has received. So I've set up a three-party system here. I have one UI for member one. I have a different UI for member two, and I can step through all the uh, different elements of the uh, Firefly data model. And it also comes with a fully self-documenting API, uh, courtesy of OpenAPI and Swagger. Uh, so each node uh, will kind of expose all these APIs, and I'll walk through a few of them in a second. So those are kind of the core pieces, I suppose, uh, the CLI, the UI, the API documentation. And then we also have a set of sample applications, which I'm going to use to demo actually how this works. So this is a sample application that uh, is just a very, very simple private data exchange. Right? This is the classic enterprise use case where you have three organizations, in this case, uh, that want to share data. But some of the data may need to be broadcast to all the members. Some of the data may need to be between only two of the members or some other combination. And this application is just a very simple uh, demonstration of what that looks like on Firefly. So I'm going to start with a broadcast message. I'm sending this from uh, the first member, but every member is going to get it. And I can actually show uh, both of these at the same time, I think, so that you can see uh, both members. So I'll switch this to look from another member's perspective. If I send a broadcast message, it's going to go out. It's going to be uh, batched. It's going to be hashed. And the hash is going to be pinned to the blockchain. And then you see it was received over here on member one as well. If I switch to member two, so member zero, member one, member two all got this hello everyone message. Now, it looks very simple at the uh, surface level, but I want to take a little bit of a dive to all the things that just happened underneath the covers. So I mentioned that uh, we have the data, first of all, gets packed into a batch. Uh, and we can look at the API to see uh, 
a new batch that was created. It's probably easier to see on the Firefly UI as well. Um, the message here was a broadcast message. And then this broadcast message is also going to be tied to a transaction. This transaction actually gets pinned to the blockchain. Uh, and I can show also in the, uh, I, we're running Ganache locally uh, for this local stack. So we have a local Ethereum blockchain. You can see a transaction just that went through uh, to pin that so that we know exactly uh, when the data was stored. And then this transaction is linked back to the actual message here. And uh, in the UI, I can see uh, the data that was attached to that message. I can also do a directed message and choose only one or two recipients to receive my message. So for this one, I will say hello to org one. And org one is going to receive it, but org two cannot see it. And of course, all the same things happened here. Uh, we have a uh, blockchain transaction that happened on Ganache. It uh, stored a hash of the data on the blockchain. Uh, I can also show, I talked about how each uh, operation, we have plugins for different blockchains, for different external storage. Uh, so all the operations that happened behind the scenes in Firefly, for this we had an Ethereum transaction, we had uh, an IPFS transaction. Uh, for the public events, we have just simple uh, HTTPS broadcast for the, uh, for the private events. Uh, I can see here now on, uh, on the member that sent the data, it's, we have a timeline view of all the data that's been sent from this first member. This was the broadcast that I sent, and this was the uh, private message. And if I go to the same timeline on uh, member one, I can see the items that were received. And of course, I can see the ones that were received by uh, member two as well. <clears throat> so going back to kind of show the architecture, we have we have a message that may come in as a broadcast or a, a private message. It gets batched in. We have all these different plugins, and uh, in this case, uh, as we've mentioned a few times, we're using IPFS for the public data. So anything that's a broadcast message that's accessible to everyone is going to go through the IPFS plugin, and that data will then be distributed through the peer-to-peer -peer file system so anyone can access it. Anything that is private data will simply be stored internally in the database and will be only shared uh, with the members that it was directed to. And then every single one of these items is paired with a blockchain transaction, uh, in this case on Ethereum, that tells you exactly uh, a hash of the data so you compare the data to that transaction and tells you the ordering of it uh, and you have an immutable history uh, so you can pair those off-chain events with those on-chain events. That's about it for the, uh, the quick demo. We're going to dive much deeper in a few minutes for uh, showing exactly what the stack looks like. We're going to do a workshop uh, a little bit later to kind of walk through this, show you the CLI, the UI in more depth, uh, and really dive into how these things work together. Um, but I suppose at this point, Sophia, I can turn it back over to you. Yeah, Andrew, well, one thing, uh, thanks for the great demo. I was wondering, since we have a couple minutes, if you had the code handy just to flash up. So I, you know, I think it might be really interesting for the developers on the call to realize how little code is involved with being able to um, do everything you just demonstrated. Yeah. So uh, we do have this Firefly samples repository. Uh, and this is a great, great resource for kind of starting to figure out how these pieces fit together uh, and how you can actually use them. The one I was demoing here is what we've called private data transfer UI. Uh, and like you said, it's a very small amount of code, and that's kind of the whole goal for this project. We have a very uh, simple sort of REST API wrapper here. Uh, this project's written in Node.js and TypeScript. Uh, but all we're doing is hitting these Firefly APIs uh, that I also kind of flashed, right, with this uh, 
documented uh, Swagger API. Uh, but the uh, actual UI code for the application here uh, is very, very simple. It's in React, and uh, it's just a couple of components. You connect a WebSocket to receive the incoming messages, and then you perform some of these REST API calls. When we send a private message or send a broadcast, uh, you can direct it to whichever recipients you want. You can send a broadcast to all of them, and then you get data back on the WebSocket to know when your, your message is confirmed on the blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it, it's really a very, very small amount of code in this repository. Uh, to, to write an application that touches you know, a half dozen different services, both on-chain and off-chain, and kind of integrates it all together.